um, Keith Fletcher, who I am not a computer person, and I looked at his bio, and it's got all kinds of things that I don't understand, so I thought that's why it would be wonderful to have him explain some of those things to us, and I think specifically today you were going to talk about um, small business uh, hacking. Um, so I, I look forward to that, but um, Keith has just a, a wide range of, um, of computer experience, and he currently works for Sparrows, and he's also worked for several multi, you know, frankly, billion dollar companies as the chief information officer and uh, computer expert. So it comes with just all kinds of background and experience in the computer world, which, which again, I'm not going to try to stand up here and, and tell you all that. Hopefully, we can ask some questions and he can um, elaborate on that. So, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It, it's very nice to be here. I've spoken at a number of rotaries. I very much like speaking at your organizations. You do so much good. You take care of quite a few needs in the community, especially education, especially with children. Very important. Like I said, I'm going to forego the standard PowerPoint. That would be a little bit cumbersome right now. So I'm just going to talk a little bit. How many of you have ever, first, how many of you are small business owners or principals in a small business? About half. Okay. Some more than half. How many of you would survive if you lost all your data? What would happen? You, you would survive if you had no customer list, if you had no accounts receivable, no accounts payable, no nothing. I've never had that answer before. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't have a computer. <laughs> 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 I've never had that answer before. Most <laughs> 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 companies could not survive if they lost their data. And even fewer could survive if their customers' information was taken and sold out in the open market. If you lost, somehow you end up losing credit card information for all your customers any other non-public information because that is something that those customers could come back to you if you take all the necessary precautions. So we're talking about how to prevent you from being hacked and if you are hacked, how to prevent it from being a massive problem. Most people think of hacking as strictly a someone gets into your system and takes things. Well, there's also viruses, and malware, most specifically ransomware, which is new out there, only been around for a few years, and it ends up encrypting all of your data, and then you have to pay them to get it back. That can be very expensive and very difficult because sometimes they never give it back to you. You pay them and nothing happens. So it is very, very bad. You can lose, you could be you lose everything, everything that you have, your accounting, your Word docs, your spreadsheets, your marketing materials, everything. So I've talked to you a few things about how to stop both the outside hacker from getting in and what to do if something does happen, and also how to prepare in case you do get infected. How many people here have ever had a virus on their computer? Everybody. It happens. That needs to be planned for. In your small business, you need to make certain that you are running quality antivirus software on every computer. But also, you need to make sure that your firewall has the ability to block viruses. And in today's environment, you also need to be blocking spam. You need to make sure that junk mail doesn't necessarily get in. Nothing is perfect. You won't be able to block all of it. But you need to make sure that the junk mail and the infected mail does not make it to you. Generally, that will require using an outside third-party service. There are a number, of, there are lots of them out there. You also need to make sure that your firewall, which we'll talk about more when we're talking about for hacking, you need to make sure that your firewalls are very good. And I don't mean the Windows firewall on your computer. We're talking about a, an actual device that sits between your network and your internet provider. 
Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, they don't provide a real firewall. They don't provide you with something that's basically just a modem. Maybe it has a few other features in it. It's not really a firewall. You need to look at something that is PCI compliant at minimum. How many people take credit cards in their business? If you don't, if you're not PCI compliant, you can't take credit cards. You eventually you do get audited, and they do make sure if you have a point of sale system that takes credit cards, you must have PCI compliant security. So that's the minimum that you should have for a firewall. But your firewall really should also be looking at your traffic inbound. It should be looking at websites that you're visiting and making sure that a site you visit isn't infected. So it should be doing more than just blocking people coming in. It should also be protecting you going out. The best firewalls nowadays do that. The true business class firewalls do. Something that you would get from Best Buy does not. We're talking about, you know, I'm talking about firewalls. Yes, you need to make sure that you have that because your credit card company says you have to have it, etc. But you also have to have it to protect your people too. We've all heard of hostile work environment, right? You can utilize your firewall, a good firewall, to protect your business not just from hacking, but also from things like that by filtering the websites people can get to. If you reduce the inappropriate sites, you then protect your business from your internal IT abusers. They may not be hacking you, but they're doing things minimum they're wasting time. But at worst, they're opening you to liability. There's, there's virtually no fiscal difference between someone coming from the outside and hacking your things and, it, and an employee internally doing something that can cause you to be sued. Either way, it can cost you a lot of money. Not a good thing. Fire, good firewalls can block that. You also, as we talk about antiviral software, Good antiviral software also should be stopping malware. Not just viruses, but also various types of malware, which would also be web-based. Which means if you go to a website that's bad, and you get there, it should block the download of something. If you try to download it, it should block that. And say, no, this is, this, this is inappropriate, or this is dangerous. And it should do that for you. Good antiviral software will. Generally, that type of software is not free. If you're not paying for something at all, if it's free, I guarantee you it is worth every penny you're paying for. Mm -hmm. I absolutely guarantee that. Some of the free ones aren't bad. For home use, not too horrible. For business, would not recommend using them at all. Now, if your business does get does get infected and a lot of files get destroyed. If you don't have a backup, they're gone. One of the main points that you have to have to protect yourself after you've been infected, first we're talking about how to keep you from getting from having a problem happen. But if a problem does happen, you've got to be able to get your data back. How many people have lost files? Yeah, most of you probably most of you. If you don't have a backup, they're gone. So having a backup is great. Some people just have a really a USB thumb drive and you copy your Word documents to it, etc. Well, that's better than almost better than nothing. You really need a backup strategy where you're backing up all of your important files, your accounting files, your marketing, your CRM, your customer files, everything that you've got to make sure that that is backed up. And now it should be backed up to a separate drive, not just a thumb drive, to an actual backup, proper backup solution using proper backup software. It should also then go off site too. Because if you have your backups and you've been doing them you've been doing them religiously, you do them every day, they're perfect, you know they're flawless. They're on the nice drive right here next to your server in your office, and your building burns down. You made beautiful backups. It is now a beautiful lump of blood after it's been burnt. Useless. You need to make sure that those go off-site. There are a lot of methods to do that. You could, some people simply say, 
I'll keep trading this little device out. I'll have one here and then I'll take one home. I'll bring that one back and trade them out. That you're going to you're going to forget to do that. You're going to stop doing it. It's going somebody's going to do it wrong. And if you don't keep testing those devices, the constant moving back and forth and etc., eventually those will fail and those will fail sooner. You're better having it now that they can be moved up to the internet, they can be moved up, up into the cloud. There are numbers of ways. We've all heard Carbonite, etc., all of those, saying back your files up. Well, they're really talking about consumer files, your home PC, not your servers. Because while it's terrific to be able to back your entire solution up like that, it's not designed to get it back quickly. Yes, your files are there, but getting them back to here when you have to bring yourself back up is very slow. So if when you're looking at solutions for a cloud-based backup, you really want a business class solution, not a, not a $49.95 consumer class solution. You want a better one, one that actually, when you, when you need it, you can either turn your business on and run up in the cloud which is the ideal solution, because normally if you're going to need your off-site backup, it's not because your server failed. If your server failed, your on-site backup is still there. It's if, you're, if you cannot get to your office anymore. So it's gone. So you really want to be looking for a solution that lets you run outside your office. So if there's an emergency, you can then have access to all of your files out in the cloud. You have access to your program. You have access to everything. So you're backed up and you can then run your entire business from home, from wherever you end up having to be. Let's look at a hurricane coming through. Savannah, it hasn't happened in an extremely long time, but it could. Hurricane comes through, everybody has to evacuate, you're gone for two weeks. How many of us could shut our business down for two weeks and not do any collecting, not do any anything? How many? <laughs> Literally. Could, how long would your business last if, it, if you had to shut down for two weeks you couldn't do, couldn't do anything? Not very long. It would not be good. No. So you need to be able to function. That's something to look at. And with this backup, you're talking about making different versions of backups. Because obviously, you don't just want today, okay, backup tonight, wipe off the backup from yesterday. You need to have versions of this, especially with the malware, that's, with ransomware and the malware that's out there. It may have been on your system before you realize it for a week. And everything's been infected for a week. So you have to go back in time to grab what you need so you can restore and be, and be running again. Same thing with you have a very important spreadsheet that you've been working on and working on. It's got 10 tabs in it. Well, you accidentally delete tab 8, but you don't notice it. Until you go back to, oh, this is what I do with the... Now you have to go back to get tab 8 from an older version. But if you only kept yesterday's, it's gone. So you need a proper backup solution to help protect you, not just against, against hacking. And hacking not just from third parties coming in, but also against your accidental hacking. Where somebody just accidentally just does the wrong thing. And if, when or if this happens to you, you need to make sure that if you do get hacked, if you do get infected, you need to make sure you communicate both to your staff, tell them what's happened, tell people what has happened, but also possibly to your customers. Depending on how you were infected, you may be sending out emails to your customers, you don't realize it, and they're getting files from you that are infected. You're sending out, hey, here's my picture of whatever, because that's what's happening to you. It's sending out something, trying to get your customers to, add, to click on it and infect themselves. But it now has access to your Outlook, the access to your email. You want to make sure that you communicate to everyone, all the stakeholders, all those that could be affected by what's happened to you. Then, if you have actually been hacked from an outside person coming in and taking information that you think might have gone public, that's where you need to have a plan to work with your marketing people, your PR firm, to get in front of it. 
Because instead of waiting for someone to discover that XYZ company has been hacked and all their customer data is out there, you need to be in front of it to say, we stopped it, we prevented it, here's what we were doing, here's what happened, we're very sorry, here's what we'll do about it. As opposed to waiting for somebody to realize it and then you end up in trouble for it. Do you think that perhaps... I just have a question, question about yes. It sounds like you're an advocate for the cloud. So with that, it seems like that makes you more susceptible to hacking. No, it actually does not. The odds in the cloud, as long as you pick the right providers, think about it. You It costs a lot of money to have a high-end business class intrusion detection system. Big one, an enterprise class. It's a lot of money. I'm assuming no one here, no one's company here is uh, hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Golf Eleven million. Yeah. Eleven million. That's, that's, that's bill. Eleven billion. Keyword construction. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then you guys, just like when I was at Low Enterprises, we were eight billion. Yes, we had phenomenal systems that kept everybody out. But unless you are big enough to be able to afford to buy things like that, you really. You want to be somewhere where that class gear and that class of literally network management exists to protect you because it's not protecting just you, it's protecting you and all these other clients. So you're sharing a little tiny piece of the price for enterprise class, but you still get all the benefits of it. You get the full benefits of an enterprise class protection system without having to pay an enterprise class price for it. Now, the cloud does have downsides to it, obviously. First, you have to make sure you passwords, user IDs, etc., the way that you get access to the cloud, protect those and make them simple. We all heard about when Apple got hacked and all of these pictures from all these celebrities made it out in the wild, right? Lots and lots of them. Well, that happened because it wasn't Apple that got hacked, it was their accounts that did. Because, oh yeah, they either had passwords of password, which some did, it was really funny, and some of them had their password recovery methods that were mindlessly, that were just stupid. The answers were so simple that anybody that read their IMDB bio knew exactly what these answers were. So they got hacked. Apple didn't get hacked, the people did. Again, you have to protect yourself with any system there is, but if there's access to it over the net, yes, you must protect your passwords and your information. Change them regularly, make them complex, don't make them simple. You need to protect yourself up in the cloud. But the cloud itself, almost always, unless you pick the wrong provider, will be will be more secure than trying to have it in your in your office with full internet access to it. Obviously, if you shut your systems down, you have no access to the internet, no access to anywhere, well, then there are no hackers, but that's not realistic anymore. Systems don't exist anymore. Spirit's the large technology company in the region. We do everything from full-blown phone systems, complete IT outsourcing. We have the only data, physical hosting data center in Savannah. We have thousands of users running in, running in that every day, all the time. We have we the largest surveillance installation companies. We do cameras. We do not do alarm systems or entry systems. We do surveillance systems. We also have a very large web development department. We do, we do websites for people, for literally huge numbers of our customers. Um, Savannah Christian, the uh, LEPC, which is the Local Emergency Preparedness Committee, and all over. We do lots and lots of them. So we, we handle all of those things and everything in between. Malwarebytes. Malwarebytes? Malwarebytes is a great package to clean up after you have a problem. There are better packages to prevent it, but they are exceptional. Malwarebytes, their claim to fame is they have figured out how to get rid of everything. That's what they're really great at. After you've been infected, it's the best, one of my go-to tools, that and Kapersky, to go and get rid of an infection. Great for that. I'll be honest, we've never, I've never ever used it for prevention. 
Just there are better tools out there for prevention. Just because it it's not bad, it's a little pricey in some cases, and but it's and it's overhead is a little high on it for business. But for consumer, it's not it really bad. For business, there's much better tools for business. Okay, walk me through, and if I want to back up my complete server or data, and where is your data center, by the way? Our data center is on Roland Avenue. It's one of the highest spots in Savannah. Mm -hmm. it is, we are physically next to one of the major substations. We have a secure facility. We have our, our own gas power, you know, natural gas power generators, everything separate, all designed around 4.9, four to 5.9 for the buff time, always. And because we're sitting next to one of the major substations, we almost never lose power anyway, but even if we did, we then pop in and we do not go down. We have got everything hardened. We have multiple carriers and multiple lines from carriers getting in. So you you always have access to your systems, no matter what. Okay, so if I was backing up from my computer and I would just like go into a website and hit backup and then it transfers, how does it get to your station? We would be using, there's software that we have to like for servers, Storagecraft. It's a phenomenal piece of software. We partnered with then a couple of companies that then we would be taking it from. We, that would then do the backup to your on-site backup system, and it would then do your backup into the cloud. Now, the backups, though, don't just go, okay, there to us. It's there, Atlanta, San Diego, and then Toronto. So your data is backed up all over. So. If the lower 48 is completely destroyed and you are using us to make sure that your backups are working, you will still have access to your data. I don't think you'll care, but you will. <laughs> so no, you'll make sure that your stuff is fully backed up. We use that and that's very solid. We can then spin up an instance of your server out in the world. So if Savannah is evacuated or if, or more likely, your physical building is inaccessible for whatever reason. Fire, flood. Marcel Constructions, you can't use it for three weeks. Mm -hmm. We can spin you up out, out in the cloud and you'd be fully functional then. So if we had to evacuate and we're up in Macon or something and you've got a laptop, I can key in the laptop and get to my backup. You'd be able to get to your system and have it run, your server. We're okay. talking to server now. Okay. If it's just files, we also have you be able to get at your files. There are lots of ways to do that too. If all you wanted were files. But we recommend taking the entire server, back the server up, and we can run an instance of that server out in the world. Which gives you everything then, your programs, everything. I use an expensive system. I got four hard external hard drives. One's Monday and Wednesday, one's Tuesday and Thursday, one's Friday. And you take them home? One's monthly. I mean, every, all of them. The only one that goes in the office is the one I'm. Using right then. Using right then. Which works, but the problem that's you have to keep doing it. Eventually those will fail, they will fail faster. Yeah. Because you're moving around, they won't last as long. Generally those hard drives that you have are slower, so it takes longer to do your backups. It takes me about an hour. The, the amount of data you have is, is enormous. Yes. Ooh, you're looking at lines. we've got it's many long customers long. that have multiple terabytes of data. Yeah. So that gets to be very difficult to do that. You definitely need to be doing incrementals, not full backups every night. But if you if you don't have that much data, what you're doing works. We don't. We tend to not recommend doing it that way. We tend. We definitely push have, have better software and make sure it goes up into the cloud as well, because you have backups, but you can't run those backups. So if something happened to your to your office, yes, I have. I have. You have the data, but you can't do anything with it. You're going to have to bring your server back up to run all of your applications then and everything, unless you're talking just files, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that stuff. Those are AutoCAD files for the most part. Which means you then, which if it's AutoCAD, you're going to need to have a fairly good sized system then to run AutoCAD on. You'd have to have that anyway, even with the even with cloud base. So, I'm still running XP on two of them. That has to go. <laughs> you cannot even, XP absolutely has to go. You cannot be running it. You cannot be running XP. And basically, Windows 7 is the oldest operating system that should even be thinking about running it. Vista should be gone. 
probably XP like should be absolutely gone. I got that new auto pad <laughs> to run the letter. Word did not support it. You can't even tell if you've been hacked anymore because Microsoft is not even putting out security updates. So you have no way to know if you've even been hacked. Antivirus software is no longer writing good virus software for XP. They don't. Microsoft has told them don't do it, and they don't. It is super dangerous to be using XP anymore or anything that can touch the internet. The only thing that, that I would say is you could still use the older versions for might be a voicemail system on your phone system that never goes to the internet or anything. It's just recording over the old fashioned pick up the phone, tape record the thing, hang up the phone. That's about the only that's the only use I can think of for XP, because that's safe. It never goes to the internet, doesn't do anything. It's just sitting there in your on your phone system. Other than that, we would not use XP for anything, and it's dangerous. And we'd be very, very, very happy to help you fix that. Because you need to. If you've got a business and you're still running XP, and I'm not trying to sell, but you've got to fix that. It's too dangerous for you. Because you will have a problem. It's not when, you know, it's not if, it's when. You absolutely that will cause you a problem. That's not it's not worth it's not worth the risks. Um, I mentioned earlier, I don't know, I'm a business or anything, but for my personal use, I've always had a Mac and or, or Macs, and I've never had to have any type of virus software or anything. So Macs are infected at a rate higher than PCs now, but you can't tell. There was one virus that infected almost 90% of all Macs on the planet. They had to release a huge patch that everybody had to install and pull them off because you can't put that, you cannot put quality antiviral software on a Mac. Because of, uh, unlike on a PC where <clears throat> all files that are written go through a single routine, so you can watch everything that's happening, on a Mac, they'll let the Macs will allow software to write directly to the hard drive all by themselves. They can access the drive directly. It, it, it makes for great speed improvement. It's really fast, it's really neat, but it's not as secure. But if you recall, Macs are not designed for corporate use. They're for individual people. Mm -hmm. And to quote Steve Jobs, people that buy Macs are the smartest people on the planet. They don't need help, and they will use it perfectly. <laughs> Always. In other words, you will never go somewhere that you'll never go to a bad site. You'll never do anything wrong. You'll never get hacked. Mm -hmm. You'll always be perfect. That I don't think that's realistic. But it is, Macs are not any more secure. Matter of fact, they're less secure than PCs. So, okay, just from my personal experience, I've had I've been a Mac user for probably nine years now. I've never had any kind of antivirus software. I've never had. Any but you don't issues. know if you have. But you, okay. the thing is, you don't even know if you've been infected or not. Mac, the only way a virus can pull off is when Apple releases patches, which I'm assuming you stay fully patched up all the time, right? I don't know what that means. Apple does patches, literally. You mean like uh, software updates? Yes, uh, constantly. Updates. Like you on the iOS. Point. Yes, updates. you get updates. Okay. Those okay. updates eliminate whatever virus that they're finding. They, they go on, they go through, they, they get rid of it, and they don't tell you anything, but they fix it. And that's why you're doing them. And I'm assuming you keep your Macs up to date. You need to make sure you keep them up to date. And that's, and that's how you prevent that. That goes for iPhones too. All computing devices can be infected. Can be. Mobile devices are much safer than PCs, obviously, because you don't do as much with them, and it's harder to load stuff. It's harder to load software on them and everything else. Yeah. They all can be. It does happen. The viruses are out in the wild. They do exist. A lot of them are also just bad apps that do bad things to you. Mm -hmm. That take information that they weren't supposed to, etc. Those happen. There are a lot of things, and there is corporately, you can go to mobile device management, which we recommend for large companies, so they can secure the, so they, they can secure all their phones, secure their tablets, track where they are, do everything. We truly recommend that for big companies. And I'd imagine that your company does something like that, your engineering firm. They right. do. They, I don't know what they do. But they, they do something. I just, I just do my thing and it's right. taken care of. <laughs> I imagine they do. Because most large companies do that because it improves security on the devices. So it's very, it is important to do that as well. But for a regular person, probably just be careful with what you load. Just be careful with what you do. If anything that asks, if all of a sudden something pops up and says, install me, um, make sure you meant to do that. 
Any, just like on the PC, anything pops up and says, it's okay, install this. The almost always, I'll give this about 99.999% of the time, it's no. Never say yes. And you have to be careful with the yes and no boxes because sometimes both boxes mean yes. So you really want to just close your browser when that happens. Don't say yes or no, just shut it down. Just say, nope, go away, not, not doing anything. I'm hitting on off button and holding it. That works. <laughs> that works just fine. I got more semantics when I'm running. Yes. And it does tell me a lot of times where it's catching stuff. Yep, and it will. But I have had stuff flash up on the screen and not. You say, no, don't want it. Don't click, kill it. Hold oh, on. You're right. And that's and that's not a bad method. It's a belt and suspenders approach that says, it's not going to be there. It's a little, normally you just, Close the browser, close whatever it is, and you're fine. But you have to be careful sometimes with the yes no's because some of these people, when they write stuff, they don't do it the way they're supposed to. <clears throat> and same thing with we're talking about going to sites that are, are difficult. You have to be careful. Make sure the site you're going to really is the site you meant to go to. Wells Fargo had a problem for a while. Somebody put up a fake Wells Fargo logon page. And literally, they send out they send out a big spam message to people saying, "Your account needs to be checked. Click here to go check it." Yeah. They clicked on that. They went to the fake page that looked identical. It was just mis well, sorry, it was misspelled. They didn't really realize the URL was just misspelled. They typed in their user ID and password, poof, and it popped them off to the real Wells Fargo page as if they couldn't log in to a, a I'm sorry, they couldn't log in page from Wells Fargo. Oh, so they typed in user and password and went, went to their account. Didn't think anything of it. They just picked up their user ID and password. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful. Again, we talked about having spam, something that blocks spam. If you don't get that message, you don't even click on it to go somewhere. So you need a good anti-spam system that will stop those from coming in so you aren't even tempted to click on something you aren't supposed to. Real, real, real quick, because I know we're out of time. Browsers. I've always heard that Internet Explorer is not the best browser, and either go with Firefox, Fox, or Chrome. My personal favorite is Chrome. Mm -hmm. You will find there are some sites that you have to use Internet Explorer with. Mm -hmm. For security reasons, Internet Explorer has enormous amounts of additional functionality mm -hmm. built into it that Chrome, Firefox, etc. does not. Yeah. How about the new one on 10 that... That's the Internet Explorer. That's Internet Explorer. Well, they call it yeah. something else. Yeah, so they're, they're calling it something else. Yes, they they the name. They've got the E. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It works well. But it is, again, Chrome, etc. is a generally most techs like Chrome better. It's faster. It is a different level of security. It is not necessarily more secure or less secure. It's just different secure. But Internet, Internet Explorer, which includes the browser in 10, which is the same thing. It's just renamed, reskinned, looks better, and the code is better in it, actually. It runs better. But it's still Internet Explorer. It has all the extra security hooks for logging into Microsoft-based systems. And that's where the big upside to Internet Explorer is for people that have websites that, especially when they have security around them, when they're accessing databases, they're accessing... CRM systems, they're accessing anything like that. Internet Explorer tends to be their preferred browser because it does things built in that the other browsers don't have. So you may need to use Internet Explorer. That's why A, you should never uninstall it. And B, you need to leave it somewhere where you can get at it. But obviously using Chrome as your default or Firefox, no downside to it, works just fine. You just want to be able to get to Internet Explorer if you need it. Now, and if it, I, you've got a copy of the latest article, and I, after we're done, which we're breaking up in just a minute, I'd like to talk to any of you that would be interested in either, if you have questions, you need help, whatever, I'll be here, and let's talk. We'll see if we can help you. Good. Okay. Thank you very much.